seeing that on the answer CTV, and I think I'm going to involved with cameras and things like that. But that's not what people out there, the people out there want CTV to protect them as a threat. Uh, I would just like to ensure some guarantee that if there's any media and for extra cameras, that the police and this new central command would accommodate it. Um, if I get more demand for CTV being installed, Actually, it, it, in one sense, this proposal is reassuring from, from the point of view, the civil liberties point of view, because at least it's not some uh, private security organization that's running it, which happens with the numbers, and I think that's where the concern has to be. Where this is to a central control that is run by the police and the fire brigade, and I think it, 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 it's, uh, it's to be welcomed. <coughs> I'm very nervous when we start saying that the police and fire service are going to fill any gap that we leave, because every conversation I'm having with those organisations is they're nervous when we use that language, because they're saying our resources go. So I, I would want some real assurance that you know the police and the fire service are committed to this for the long term, it's not going to see it diminish. Because you know the, the police aren't saying that to me when I'm meeting with them, they are saying the polar opposite. They have no need to bring to the park and they have no resource there on the trip services. Okay, your chair. Can we have the Perry Police Department to use their services? Um they don't have the Perry Police Department. No, don't ask me, but I'm a dangerous assumption. I assume that when we say what the Perry Dallas Brand is, I think if you read it, what it's saying is that we will maintain all with the CCTV, but the actual People who sit there looking at them and, and, and managing what's going on will be the police and the fire brigade. We as a rural council will have to be contributing all of our. Through, through you, Chair. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine that another organisation would do some sort of work for nothing. Well, which is in fact what we're asking, isn't it? No, I think what we've said is that the police use those images anyway, yeah. uh, and that we just want to increase the capacity to be able to do that remote control of their centre. Or that they contact our control room and ask for images to be sent. This is going through the technology that they've got to access them and they could be promised that they can do them. So if they do that anyway, I think it's not just about the police that capacity, but anyway. So are we doing them a favour? Can we charge them? Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. 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 Um, in terms of, you know, our provider of cameras, I mean, we, we, still, we still provide them, but we're all the same day, so they will access the, the images for us so and work with us with our community control. Yeah. It's just that they have greater um, control over the rest of themselves. They can capture the images rather than what it is that the council has offered to do as well. Are we going to be in a position where at some stage, if there's an instance on the road, we're going to be asking them to monitor their own land? The way it ordinarily works is that if there's an incident and someone phones and says there's, there's some new care in it, um, that goes into the, into the control room now, and they alert either the police, depending on the severity of it, or the community patrol team. What we'll be doing is the community patrol team will be picking up that call for their cop and making the judgment whether it's one for them to deal with or one for the police to be involved with that. Event. And then the police will ask if, if it's required that CCTV, which is well, they'll be able to control directly then, so that even the CCTV images where they fill in that location and they have to start reporting themselves. If there would be an incident, they would respond to anything. It is a slight concern, I wouldn't mind concern with the resources, because all the I mean, the police resources now, they were going to develop a huge big class A community response, that's a four hour response time. And if they're going to be getting calls from community patrol, unfortunately, they're going to be giving down road and that's a you know, longer hour to take a four hour response, which is going to negate the zone county. Apart from the recording time, which can be used later. Yeah, well, I think it, it needs a lot of dialogue to be to what we get. Yeah. I think in terms of the response to the point, it doesn't, it doesn't change. It's just that the communication to the police changes from our heart control group directly from the police to the control supervisors. I don't think it changes in their resources to respond. Yeah. Mike. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
nature. So this is a simple duplication. As we see here <coughs> now, the police and the fire brigade are looking at cameras, and we've got staff sitting there looking at the same cameras. So with all the cuts we, we've got to take, the same with the police, the same with the fire brigade, but they do have a duty of care, and they're doing it now, so it's no extra cost to them, and no extra burden. Because of the savings we've got to make, but it could be argued, this saving, this is a, it's a simple duplication, and it could be argued that it should have been done years ago, to save the council and the taxpayer money, because, as I've said, it is a duplication. Thanks, Chair. In terms of the artwork and has that been looked at for sale, the answer is no, it hasn't. I think the artwork is very important, we need to keep that for um, the public viewing and their benefit. Um, if an asset transfer does go forward, the council will retain ownership of the asset, uh, that's been the building and the artworks in there, and it will, through a legal agreement and probably a long lease arrangement, um, manage the asset transfer in that way. So that if anything was to change in the future um, or the asset transfer wasn't to be successful, the council would uh, retain the assets and that goes back 
so there's no uh, risk there that those assets will be lost uh, for the benefit of uh, other investments. The, the, so the consideration to sell something hasn't taken place, but has <coughs> it already taken place? Because there could be some things that haven't been displayed for the last 20 years in the story, but you know, that's a bit more value. And the other thing is, do you know, with the, um, the city region offer, do we partner with other like-minded galleries to swap around that traditional thing so that maybe we don't need anything from the property? Um, so, yeah, in, in terms of the, the artworks there, all of the <coughs> artworks are valued, and obviously that's done for insurance purposes, uh, so we know the value of the, uh, of the collection that we've got. Uh, in terms of the artworks that are there at the moment, until we completed recently the refurbishment we didn't have the display space uh, to show all of those artworks on a, on a rotating basis. Now that that refurbishment has been completed, we do, so those artworks can be brought out and progressively shown in, in, in different ways. Uh, we do work very closely with other galleries, both in this country and abroad, and there are a number of our exhibits at the moment that are actually on international tour and display, and similarly, uh, we take items from other galleries and museums across the world uh, as well. I can just you know, make a point here. No one's mentioning, I mean, the, one of the biggest growth areas in the economy at the moment is heritage tours and cultural tours. The amount of visitors are coming into this area now and they, they, wait, they want to see exhibitions, displays. So these items that we're talking about here is vital because money is coming into the area in large amounts and people want to see our cultural and heritage facilities. So I don't know whether there seems to be a negative, you know, sort of attitude on this here. I mean, this is very positive here. These are assets which are going to really, uh, you know, they're, they're not assets to the world, they're assets to Merseyside, but businesses are coming into the area in the hundreds of you know, hundreds of thousands and thousands, and we need to take that into consideration. It's a very positive situation.
uh, we would like to be in a position to try and take a transfer of land the 1st of April 2014. So that's in about five months' time. Now, that is a fairly ambitious uh, time scale, and um, we may not be able to make all of the savings at the beginning. We might have to just um, stretch the time to a little bit longer time period, but we will know the details when um, that detailed business plan is completed, and then we'll report that back to, um, to members. Yeah, because it does. I mean, I do think it's extremely ambitious, actually, but it, 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 it's quite a massive undertaking to take on.
have our uh, visitors for our ex Edison Jones days were absolutely exceptional. We've got some of the largest number of Edison Jones days in the, in the country. I was talking to a, a lead, leading heritage architect the, the other week, and again, he was expressing how important it is for us to build money coming into the early tourism generation. He was talking about the material, the heritage material that we're all put, put out from a tourism standpoint, from a general heritage standpoint. He said he thought it was the best in the world of economic. That's what we're trying to do. That's the thing that we understand. That's the stand we're trying to make. If I could just help in terms of the question that I think Councillor or comment Councillor Parks has made around the expenditure of where that goes on an annual basis. I've had to look at that back over the past two or three years. Um, and again, this is only something I became responsible for for the first of April of this year. But um, the, the pattern is, is this that about five thousand pounds per year is to put is put into the uh, bus and transport and tram event uh, that's held annually. And then there's approximately about seven thousand pounds uh, that's put into the activity that, that Councillor Williams has referred to around the heritage open days and support for what we just do training and preparation for those and that. So by my calculation, that's roughly about twelve thousand pounds. Now there's some small variations because in one or two years we've done a couple of extra things or small grants, but if on average the expenditure is around twelve thousand. Okay, and, and the budget. Um, it's around 60, so we think that you know there's roughly a saving of 40,000 pounds 